How does the average retiree spend their time and what does it mean for your retirement? Well, that's exactly what we're going to explore in today's video. Now, as a quick aside, you'll notice I'm in a little bit different of a setting today. My office is currently in the midst of a remodel. So for the next two weeks, I'm gonna be coming at you from my home actually. That being said, let's get into it. So I read this article last week that showed the chart that I have on the screen and it breaks down how the average retiree spends their time. Now, at first glance, this chart doesn't exactly exude confidence or excitement for retirement. This isn't exactly the dream you probably had for your retirement. Sleeping is the biggest time block, and there's really nothing wrong with that. Relaxing and leisure is the second biggest time block. For some, that might be too big of a time block, but again, nothing really wrong with relaxing and slowing down a little bit in retirement. And then we see TV and screen time as the third highest allocated time activity, if you will. Now, the article I was reading was fairly critical of this chart and was generally an article written for someone who's maybe a little bit younger and still working. And the typical pattern of life is you go to schooling for, let's say, the first 25 years. For the next 40, you work at a job and are constantly delaying gratification with the hope and idea of finally gaining freedom with your time. Well, is this really how this dream manifests for the average person? Is this what this delayed gratification was actually for? Now, here's where I want to pause and make a point. Averages don't determine anything about your path. It's simply a summary measure of the population. For instance, here is the average retirement savings by age across different ages. Now, the average retiree has right around $400,000 saved for retirement. Now, let me first say, if you can reach your goals with $400,000 saved for retirement, then you're financially independent and you've won the money game. So I don't want to make it seem like $400,000 is nothing. That's certainly a lot of money. But if you have a lifestyle that requires you to accumulate much more than $400,000, you don't look at this chart and go, what the heck, wealth building is absolutely pointless. The average person only accumulates $400,000, so why would I even try to build more if the average person doesn't build more wealth than that? Averages don't determine who you will be, but rather help you determine who you want to be. They allow you to look at the general population and go, I need to be different than the average. I need to chart a different path. Just like you might look at the retirement savings chart and decide that you need to be above average in terms of your accumulation and savings goals, I think it's equally important to look at this time chart and use it to help guide our retirement in order to get what we want out of retirement. I've seen hundreds of retirees successfully retire. I've read thousands of pages on how you can build a quote unquote good life in retirement. I believe mastering retirement comes down to three important areas, health, relationships, and then figuring out the best way to spend the excess time that you have as well. If we look back on the time chart, I think the average retiree is failing in mastering these three areas. The average person spends roughly 20 minutes per day on physical activity to improve their health. 20 minutes now is obviously better than zero minutes, but it's not enough to maintain strong health and try to combat the effects of aging. They spend 30 minutes socializing and building better relationships. Now I'm someone who's certainly not in the extrovert category. I tend to be a little bit more even reclusive, if you will, but even I feel like I would need more than 30 minutes of social interaction in order to maintain happiness. And a lot of research backs this up as well. And then the excess time, everything outside of that, you know, primarily is devoted towards screen time. Now, if you look at this chart and this time breakdown, and this looks exactly like your dream of retirement, who am I to tell you anything different? Have at it. But I don't think this looks like the dream for many. Breaking down this data further, we can see a breakdown of how people spend their time while working full and part-time, and then how they spend their time in retirement. Note this is taken from a different study, but we see the data across the board is quite similar. On average, when work is taken away as a time block, the majority of that time gets allocated or reallocated towards TV or screen time. Is this consciously a choice that you want to make for your retirement? Furthermore, when we look at a trend of spending time as you age, we see a continual trajectory towards more screen time. Now, this move towards more leisure makes sense because as we age, our health declines and so does our ability to do a wider range of activities but is the leisure time that we wanna have, should that be devoted entirely to TV? 
But as we've covered in past videos, focusing on certain activities like fitness and relationship begets the ability to do more of these activities. And so bad habits or routines starting out at the front end of retirement build on one another in the same way that good habits build on one another. In transitioning to retirement, I think putting an intentional focus on how you will spend the additional time you have is extremely important. When we talk about financial factors versus non-financial factors in retirement, the financial talk gets a lot of attention. But it's also important to note that sometimes the non-financial factors can sometimes be more important than the financial factors. You can win the financial game and still lose at retirement. Let's say that you found out you were magically endowed with a $5,000 per month pension for the rest of your life. Now, this is a large sum of money for most of us. Many would spend quite a bit of time sitting down and thinking about how exactly to allocate the extra cash that they have each and every month. Do you wanna use it to travel the world? Would you wanna upgrade your current home? Maybe start to think about how you can give it away in certain ways. What about the pension of time that you gain by retiring? Have you sat down and been intentional about how you want to spend or allocate the extra eight hours a day that you have? Many try to figure it out as they go and there's truth to needing to change and test certain routines, but I think the less intentional you are on the front end, the more likely you are to end up closer to the average chart that we previously showed. I'll leave you with one more note from one of history's greatest investors, Ed Thorpe. Ed Thorpe ran a fund that averaged 20% per year for nearly 30 years. At the closing of his fund, after winning the money game by a wide margin, he decided that non-financial goals deserved much more focus than additional financial goals. In a podcast last year, he gave the quote on the screen. Now, just looking at this picture from this podcast, how old would you guess Ed Thorpe is? Well, he's 89 years old. And I think the quote on the screen goes to show why he looks so good for an 89 year old. I think of each hour spent on fitness as one day less that I'll spend in the hospital. Americans supposedly spend an average of 30 or more hours per week watching television. Those who do have plenty of quote unquote junk time which they can instead use for exercise or a fitness program. Five hours a week for this can add five years of healthy life. And so how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. And so even though this is how the average retiree spends their life, you don't need to be average. You can choose your own path. I think the average in this case shows us more about where people end up when they aren't making conscious choices rather than intentional choices. It's easy to slide into watching TV, but as you sit here today, that's not how most of us want to spend our time. Thanks for watching this video today. If you're looking for other ways to improve your retirement, I recently recorded a video on three retirement studies that are proven to help you live a better retirement. Click here to learn more. And always remember, you don't need more money. You need a better plan. Thanks for watching today.